Okay, hello and welcome to Irish Football Fan TV. It's Gary Spain here at the launch of the SSE Electricity League with a man who needs no introduction, the legend of Irish football and uh, he's here in his role as the new assistant CEO of the FAI. And it's a new role in Ireland. How's it going so far? Um, well, it's tough. I've been in there about uh, nine days now and um, ten days, actually, my tenth day. And it's exhilarating, it's um, nerve-wracking at first, but uh, once you get your sleeves rolled up and you start dealing with the issues and understanding things a little bit more, you, you start to uh, feel better about it and you, you, you start to, to, to really enjoy it. Um, the biggest surprise I had was the quality of the people in there. There's a vast majority of people in there who are kind of unsung heroes during the last year. The work that they've been doing, uh, unnoticed by, by most, but um, at all levels of the game, there are people in there who, who are delivering for the association. Uh, our messaging isn't good enough. People don't understand what we're doing at grassroots level. They don't understand what we're doing in football for all. Uh, our coaching of the coaches. Um, th there's so many uh, units in there that are probably overperforming uh, given the circumstances of the last 12 months. And to know that you've got that in there with your with you and, and they're on your side and. Uh, they're driving the right way. That's that's a huge help. You know, there's bits at the top, the governance, etc. We don't need to go too much into all that. How that uh, has, has changed drastically, and uh, settling that in is, uh, is 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 what's happening now, if you like, at that end of it. But at the other end, then it's getting to uh, to know the workings of the clubs, say at, at uh, League of Ireland level, the national league structures for underage players coming coming uh, into into a little bit more knowledge of that has been good and understanding it. Our relationships with UEFA, for instance, and all matters. Women's football. So I think there's where our biggest game could be uh, in the next while. I think we've um, been charged with uh, ensuring the women's game gets ultimate uh, good service by the terms of the agreement that we uh, signed off with government, with Bank of Ireland, and uh, with UEFA. So. You know, there's a number of components within the game um, underneath the banner of the FAI that uh, we we have to show real attention to. We're actually charged with that. That's not a nice thing to do. We're actually charged with that by the terms that we signed on to bring the money in to make the, the FAI work properly. So, uh, looking forward to all that. The first 10 days have been about learning as much as I can and uh, understanding pain points because there's a lot of pain still out there. But I think with what um, I, I, I'm witnessing inside in the, in the FAI and the quality of the people that are in there, uh, in, 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 you know, in, in sections of, of the building doing different things, it, it is really encouraging. And I think uh, understanding the rest of the game a little bit more, understanding outwardly, you know, what the constituents are feeling in grassroots, in amateur football, in football for all, in women's football, in the elite programmes, for international teams, and indeed League of Ireland and our senior men's international men and women's team. Um, that's the fun side of it, you know. That's the side that's okay, understanding how they go and, and what they what they believe in. But to try and build uh, a platform where everybody comes together and rises, we we believe that uh, a strong League of Ireland means every part of the game will come up behind it because that will be our elite showcase, and we'll have an aspiration. For young players, uh, you know, boys and girls, that they can get into the men's national league, they can get into the women's national league, and as a result, with the training that they get, that there may be a a a, a, a professional uh, pathway for them here in this country, or indeed, if they are leaving this country, that they're leaving as stronger, more qualified players playing in a better league, where the clubs receive more compensation on their part. That's the uh, that's the ultimate aim. And, and is it a nice thing to do? Is it a pipe dream? No, it's actually what we signed up to. We have to deliver that. We've no choice. See, it's 50 days today to the Slovakia match. What would it mean to the country for us to qualify for the Euros? Well, it, it really would be some um, some finish to it to a 12-month period that uh, just couldn't be written in Hollywood. You know, um, it, it's it's been a horror movie. It's getting into a a little bit of a, of a drama. But it would become a love story, I think, if, uh, if Mick McCarthy brings us to uh, the Euros, it would be quite incredible. And I uh, don't want to put any pressure on him at all, because there's enough pressure in there and, and they'll feel it. But hopefully they can turn it positively in that, you know, that would just override all the pain of the past and, and the narrative 
you know, would, would be something else. But without it, even without it, I think the narrative will change because we've got the 2020s coming to, to Dublin. We've got, you know, matches in Dublin that are going to turn over huge money for the economy, uh, huge money for the Exchequer. You know, football is uh, paying its way already. Uh, we got a help last week, but we're, we're satisfied that we're, um, we're in good shape and uh, we're going to keep looking for money. Okay, because we're going to show them the good things that we're doing and, and, and how well it can be spent. And I think uh, the clubs hopefully will get to trust us at all levels. I hope the volunteers, you know, the, the, the people within the game who are wondering what's going to happen now, that they find out that, uh, that ultimately Roy Barrett, uh, Liz Joyce, Catherine Guy, Gary Owens, myself, and those who work with us, the, the board who, who've done so, so, such good work already before those appointments, and uh, all the other people that are in the building and those you know charged with delivering the product around the country but we are now enablers we are not blocking okay if, if we do manage to get past slovakia and bratislava and i know it's going to be difficult we've got a potential playoff final just up the road in belfast against northern ireland now you were on the pitch in 1993 when we needed a result to qualify for the World Cup. If such a match, and I know there's a lot of bits here, but if, if we were to play Northern Ireland, just be even more at stake. Both teams would have a chance of playing in the Euros. What, what do you think of the prospects of a game like that? Well, well first of all, we have to take one game at a time, the old cliche in the book. But I also would say to you, we thought we were getting there the match before Northern Ireland in 93. We played Spain at home and I think we were happy, you know, even if we drew, that was it. We were virtually there. If we won, we were there. And the country expected it, and we failed miserably. We, we played really poorly. Spain played us off the park, and uh, we went up there with our tails between our legs a little bit, and you know, scraped over the line. Alan McLaughlin be remembered forever for, for, for getting us out of it, you know. And they had nothing to play for then, you know, because they were only playing for pride. But if we were to play them this time around, and they're playing for more than pride, that's going to be one difficult game. <laughs> and if you look, no, you, you mentioned about women's football, you mentioned about the grassroots. Mm. There's so many positives. The women's team under Vera Power doing really well. They have a great chance, two massive games next month against yeah. Greece and Montenegro. Great chance, looking good for a playoff for the Euros next, next year in England. What yeah. do you think of that? Well, I think we're, we're closer to the elite of the elite in women's football than we are uh, in our men's. I think this represents opportunity to get even closer to, to the top table and uh, we'll be as supportive as we can. But also I think it's worth pointing out co-women's football that the government insisted on uh, a ring-fenced piece of the support money to go to uh, women's football, which has never been there before. So we're delighted about that and can't wait to put that in place. And we'll also be looking very hard to uh, acquire a, a, a new sponsor. Maybe, you know, there's a, there's a sponsor out there for ladies, we think there will be, particularly given the, uh, the upward curve of the graph and where the football is going, where the National League is going and where the underage development programmes are going with women's football. Um, we think it's, it's an exciting future ahead and we'd be committed to that just as much as we would any other vertical. But they've got a little advantage in that government are insisting a lot of money is spent on them. So uh, good for them, we'll deliver. And the, the under-21s are doing really well as well. Stephen Kenny has done a fantastic job, this fantastic crop of young players. Mm -hmm. um, probably the best we've had for many years. Uh, how do you think to have high hopes for the under 20 wants to qualify for the first ever finals? Uh, of course I do, but you know, two games on the one night makes it difficult. Can't be at two games. Um, you've got the game Slovakia at the same time as, as the under 21s are playing uh, up in Tallinn. But um, what I'd say is, you know, in a year of, uh, of disappointment, in a year of negativity, uh, the one thing that kept coming through was the under 21 team and how well they were playing and they were giving us, you know, sparks of, of confidence uh, through, through a difficult year you know off the pitch um, and, and I, I have no reason to believe that that's something that's going to going to stop that they're going to keep their momentum up but it's a, it's a credit to you know to Stephen and to Keith Andrews and the team you know that they have brought that group together because they're not all just a couple of months under their 21st birthday some of them are very very young which is remarkable so, so they're, they're really delivering uh, exceptionally well and I think it all goes well for uh, that point when Stephen comes into uh, the international setup uh, at senior level. It, it, it shows that um, you know the, 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 the structures and the, and the uh, I suppose the ideals of, uh, of Stephen and Keith are more than capable of paying dividends. I mean, we, we've got young players now who are very excited about it, and we're trying to say to the elite game, 
uh, guys, we can build on this, you know, clubs, you can benefit from this. And instead of these players leaving too early and, uh, you know, small conversations coming, we really work hard together and, and, and you know, get this league in, in the shape that it can go to. Those players, yeah, okay, they'll still come out of our system. But when they leave our system, we will be fully rewarded so that we can continue the journey. And that's how, how we need to, to, to believe that the, the journey will go in the next five years. And so great players like all of those who are playing on the under 21 now, and some of them you know will probably be with the senior team. He may even have players that he, that he, that he loses for that game uh, because Mick will take them in. I mean, that augurs so well because the outside world is looking on and saying, Irish football can produce players. What we have to do now is keep it going, not let it just be a curve that dips down. We have to keep it up there so that all the players coming underneath can, uh, I suppose, strive to achieve uh, the same and more as their counterparts who are flying the flag right now.